Hey guys, Brett Kelly here for another Tuesday Tech Tip 45 Drives. Today I'm going to talk about configuring CTDB uh, version 4.9. Uh, I have done this before, but things have changed this version, so we're doing it again. All right, so uh, this topic is a user submitted one, comes by our friend uh, Thomas E. from Sweden. He asked us to go over the new configuration that comes with CTDB 4.9. Now, if you've been watching these, you'll know that I've uh, kind of gone over this topic already. But uh, with the latest update for CentOS 7.7 .7 brings a new CTDB version, uh, version 4.9 point, I don't remember what the minor is, but the key is it's 4.9. And what happened in this version is they did a complete overhaul of not how CTDB works, but how the configuration files are, um, are written and where they're stored. Uh, and honestly, it's, it, there's a lot of information missing on the internet on how to switch over uh, from an old config to a new config unless you're uh, paying for a Red Hat subscription or something like that. So what we've done in the last little bit is uh, uh, made some documentation and uh, um, some tools to switch yourself over and uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Alright, so uh, we're going to go over to my computer um, and I'm going to do a little uh, screen capture and uh, take you guys through the process. Okay, so in this video we're going to configure CTDB 4.9x, x as in I don't care what the minor version is, from scratch. Um, for those who are looking to configure CTDB um, when upgrading from an existing one, like pre-4.9, uh, check out uh, the Knowledge Base article I link here, um, knowledgebase.45drives.com, search for CTDB, you will find it. Uh, that walks through the exact process of you had a working config, you updated, now you don't. How you deal with that? Um, some references. Uh, here's a link to the CTDB manual pages. Um, I'm going to talk below about like the core configuration um, uh, configuration files you need. Um, and then if you want to go deeper into options that you have, you can, I, I'd recommend you check out those. Um, so the goal for this video is we're going to do a very basic SAMA configuration file, just so we have something to share out. Um, and we're going to go have a detailed look at CTDB configuration files in 4.9 plus the missing files and DIRs. I'm not entirely sure why they're not there in the package, but um, to get CTDB started from scratch, you need to uh, make a couple directories in the varlib file. Um, so what do you need already set up to kind of follow along with this video? You need two or more hosts to act as CTDB nodes, and you need a shared file system. So in this example, I'm going to use FFS. Uh, but this config will hold for uh, others such as clusterfs or other shared file systems. Um, so let's get into it. Let's just start by installing Samba and CTDB. So I'll do it on that one and um, do it again on this one here. All right, so Samba and CTDB, uh, we maintain our own repository. It's the exact same code as what's in the base CentOS, except we just enable the ability to use uh, Sephiroth locking. So I'll get into that a bit further when I get into the CTB options. Uh, for those walking around, watching along who aren't using CephFS or um, or don't really care about that, just don't worry about it. It's the same packages either or. Um, you can also find that here. Actually, I'll add the link. So our uh, our repo is images at 45drives.com, Ceph, and Samba. Um, I think it's Samba, um, I can't remember, but you, you'll find it in there. Um, so let's move on. So let's just do a very basic Samba file, samba.conf. So this is the existing one that, this is the default that gets placed in when you install. So I'm gonna delete the homes, printers, and print share because I don't care about them. I'm also going to delete these four options because I don't care about printing stuff. So I just want to add clustering equals yes. And we'll define one share called, uh, we'll call it share one, just to be general. Path equals, I have my shared file system mounted at ZFFS, file system gateway. Um, I'm not using a domain here. I'll add explicitly tell it which Samba users are going to be allowed. I'm using root, I know, um, just for test. So that's our basic Samba file. So 
I'm just going to send this over to number two so I don't have to type that all out again. Okay, so we're done with Samba. That's not why we're here. So let's move on. Configuring CPU DB. So um, I'll start with the, the core stuff and the stuff that's kind of the same, and then I'll slowly get into the new stuff. Uh, so the key, what does CTDB do? It monitors hosts, uh, monitors nodes. It exports a public uh, virtual um, IP, and it manages failover of Samba services. Um, so how does it know what nodes to watch? Etsy CTDB nodes file. This is the same as before, same now. What you put in here, I've already got this one set up. 1855, 1854. Those are the IPs of VSMB1 and VSMB2 here. This says CTDB knows who's a member of its cluster. Um, let me just make sure it's on this one too. Yep, okay. So, public addresses, and I've configured public addresses as well. I'm on a wide 16-bit network. Um, no one's up in the 105, so I just picked that over the top of my head. Um, and then you specify your Ethernet, so, or your interface, sorry. So IP, subnet, space, interface. Same as it was before. That's simple, right? Okay, so now, before you might have seen, we used to configure CTDB in here. Um, sometimes people did cttdb.conf. Um, so how it is now is it's ctdb at vim etsy. Well, vim, that's your editor. But it's in uh, etsy ctdb ctdb.conf. Now this file is greatly stripped down. If you've seen this before, um, the old way of doing it, this is where you would tell it what services it managed. This is where you would put uh, ctdb tunables. Um, honestly, a great centralized place. But they're moving towards a more kind of uniform way of Samba and CTB where it really is the same core developers and um, code working together that they want more lockstep of how the uh, uh, configuration files work. So, or uh, look, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, so we'll start here. Logging, gonna leave it alone, not gonna touch it. Default logging is fine for me. So really, all this conf file is used for and there are deeper um, uses. There's more options, but the key, key thing that you really need to remember here is just what the recovery lock is. So what is the recovery lock? The recovery lock tells you right there, shared recovery lock file to avoid split brain. Um, do not run CDB without this. It will not work right. Okay, so in my case though, I'm not gonna use this recovery lock. Um, so typically what this is, is a file that's located on the shared file system that all nodes of CTDB, uh, all the CTDB nodes can check, read, whatever they need to do, and that's how they know who's in charge. Um, that's how the recovery process takes and, well, yeah, all that fun stuff. The fundamental function of CTDB has not changed, just how we specify things. So, um, that's all well and good. It's just a file on the shared file system. But since I'm using CephFS, and this is a little aside, so those who aren't using CephFS, this won't matter to you as much. All you really need to know is you need to specify where your recovery lock is on the file system. But uh, CephFS is a bit different than other shared file systems. When it, ex it experiences client failure, that client actually like holds on to the files that it was open um, for an extended period of time. So this unfortunately then doesn't really jive with CTDB and it uh, it will just mark that down, mark everyone down and failover won't happen because the failed node doesn't uh, give up the lock. So how are we gonna work around this? Well, the wonderful people of the Samba team uh, developed this alternative method of spe specifying a recovery lock. Um, let me just go steal my comment here because I can never remember it off the top of my head. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to store this recovery lock as an object in my Ceph cluster. Um, and then that way I avoid all that nastiness of CephFS clients not giving their, um, their lock up fast enough. So excuse me as I remove some variables here. CephFS metadata. Um, yeah, so I, that is a bit of an aside, but uh, if you're using any old shared file system, ClusterFS, one of the other ones, just make a recovery lock and specify it in this config file. That's the only option you need. 
my case though, I do want to store it in Rado, so I'm going to use this one instead. This is also why we use the separate um, solvent packages, because you do have to uh, enable this option. So I will save it, and I'm done. I'm going to send it over to my partner in crime here. Um, if I can type correctly, fat fingers. Okay, so that's there. Um, I'll pull my notes back up here. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I did CTBConf, notes, public address. This is the core that you need to configure with CTB. Now, um, you might have noticed, well, Brett, um, you said the old conf, that's where we specified who it managed, what the tunables were, all this stuff. You haven't done that yet. Exactly. So how they've moved that is there's a separate file called CDDB tunables. So I'm not going to make that file. I don't have any tunables to assign right now. Um, that's why in that man page that I linked up above, check out uh, a couple of these links. You've got them all here, but tunables, and it lists out all the tunables you can do. Um, so, yeah, so we'll minimize that. Um, same with script options. Same with CTDB sysconfig. So uh, take a look at those. If the basic CTDB conf does not solve your needs, the answer will probably be in those. Um, so I'm not going to make those files right now. I don't need them there. So I'm going to move on. And at this point, you would say, okay, you're probably ready to start CTDB, uh, as most sane people would think. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, we can do that, but it'll fail. Why will it fail? Well, if we go check the logs, we'll see to see that it'll say a couple files and folders are missing. Um, why they're missing? Not entirely sure, but um, all we have to do is just make those directories on each node here. Um, and we just need those so CTB will start properly. Okay, now you're saying, okay, you've done it all, but you still haven't told it which services you're managing. And this is this is a big part of how everything's changed. Instead of just saying manage a Samba, yes or no, you have to link that script into the CTB event script uh, folder. That's how it knows what services to start and manage when you start CTDB. So, first of all, like the other one, unfortunately, this leg is this events legacy folder doesn't exist. Oh, well, it does in my case because I already made it, but um, it won't in your case if you're going from scratch. So make sure you make that. And then what you're going to want to do is let's see. I think I might have already had these links here, so let me just go take a look. No, I don't. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to clear. I'm going to go back to my home, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to link the CTDB event script from the default location it gets installed to. And I'm going to link it into Etsy CTDB. I'm going to do the same for the interface script. So CTDB is some core CTDB services. Uh, interfaces is the VIP. And Samba is very adequately named Samba for SMB services. If we were joining a domain, we would link the Windbind service as well. If we were doing NFS, we would link the NFS service. But right now, we want CDB to run. We want it to host a VIP, and we want it to host Samba. So we should be good. I, I have to do it to my uh, I have to do it to my friend down here too. Okay. So I'm just going to clear the screens for my own sanity. So that should be it. That's our configuration. That's all you have to do. You have to make these three core files. Uh, these are optional. Um, the tunable script options and sysconfig. These are options for these event scripts I have linked down below. These are tunables for just general CTB. Sysconfig, I'm not entirely sure what really needs to go in there. It seems to me more legacy stuff, but you can check the main page if you want to know. Uh, I'm going to make some missing directories. Um, and then you got to link which event scripts you actually want to do. So. Um, let's start this all up, make sure it all actually works. Okay, so everything's linked. All my uh, configuration files are where they need to be. Uh, let's start CTDB and hopefully it does its job. So that return, that's nice. So I'm just going to uh, watch the CTDB log for a second because I could be patient, but I am not a patient person. And that's great. So this it's working. What it's doing is it's taking recovery. 
And when it's all done, it's going to fail over. But this fundamentally means that uh, it's doing its job. Wait one more second. It should start Samba for us if it hasn't already. Yep, see there, that's where it started Samba there. And then it's running, everything's good. So at this point, I bet I can go CTV status and everyone is okay. CTV IP, that's up and I can run test param. And yep, my share is there. So that's your basic CTDB configuration for the new configuration method for CTDB 4.9 and above. Um, fun fact time. Can't really think of a good fun fact today, so we're just going to hit you with a good old boring fact. CTDB, Clustered Trivial Database. It's an extension of uh, how uh, the Sama developers stored the um, file locking mechanism and when they had to expand that out from multiple Sama servers they just threw a C on it, Cluster Trivial Database. Okay so I hope you guys enjoyed that, hope it gave you a little insight on how to convert your old CTDB config to your new one. Um, thanks again Thomas from Sweden for the uh, submission and as always we want to hear from the rest of you so hit us up below, uh, Info45Drives, any of the social medias. See you again soon.